Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and I upload three times a week on this channel. Wednesdays are fashion and lifestyle videos, Fridays are weekly uni vlogs for my life at university and Sundays are my mystery Sundays where I discuss some sort of solved and unsolved true crime case. Uh, usually just taken from your guys' suggestions that you leave in the comments below. So today I'm back with another edition from my mystery week where if you hadn't seen already I was uploading a mystery video every day of this week and today is another unsolved mystery. Today I'm going to be discussing the unsolved disappearances of three young boys. Their names were Billy Hogue, Joey Hogue and Craig Dowell. So if you want to hear a little bit about their disappearance then just keep on watching and I shall just get started. In May of 1963, Joey Hogue, who was 13 at the time, got off of the bus stop outside of his home in Hannibal, Missouri. His sister Deborah Hogue, who was 16, greeted him at the family home door along with his younger brother Billy Hogue, who was 10 years old. In total, in the Hogue family there were 11 Hogue siblings so uh, the main two in this case the two that disappeared were Billy Hogue and Joey Hogue. The Hogue siblings' parents were at a meat market so they were shopping at a market not too far from their home at this time meaning that 16 year old Deborah was in charge of the other younger siblings and as the boys were playing she told the two young boys Joey and Billy to stay in the yard and not go out of the yard anywhere further stay either in the house or in the back garden. According to the Hogue family Billy and Joey had been out just the night before and they discovered a set of caves just adjacent to Highway 79 which isn't too far from the family home. The home was going through an extensive construction meaning that workers were drilling through hillsides along the road to create sort of new extensions and there was constantly new caves being discovered and uh, areas where hills were being caved in so there was lots of new places to discover. There were already a large system of caves known to be under this area but as a result of this sort of ongoing construction there were constantly new areas where things were being caved in and things so the pathways and passageways along the caves were constantly being exposed meaning that the two boys kind of just discovered a newer area where this was sort of being exposed. According to Deborah Ho, that night before, the two boys had returned back to their home covered in red clay mud and their father had told them not to go back to where they were, like not to go anywhere near the holes because of their safety, because obviously it was all being caved in, they didn't know what construction work was being done when and where, so just for the safety of the two young boys, their father told them not to go near the holes again. So the following day, back where we started, at the start of this video. Joey Hogue, Billy Hogue and also their friend Craig Dowell went missing. They strayed away from their yard. Eyewitnesses saw them going in the direction of Murphy's Cave which was one of the biggest caves that was known in the area. So from what I can gather just trying to look into Murphy's Cave a little bit it was kind of just one of the large caves known in the area that you weren't supposed to enter without experience and the correct gear which meant that it was extremely dangerous for the three young boys to go down there even if they'd kind of looked in there before it was very, very risky for them to go down there alone. Whether these three young boys actually entered Murphy's cave is not known, but because they were seen sort of walking in the direction of the cave, a lot of people assume that that's possibly what happened to them. But once again, it isn't guaranteed. No one knows whether they actually went there or if something happened to them along the way. But all they know is that from this point on, the three boys were never seen again. It was when they didn't return home that night that the families became concerned and reported them as missing as the youngest one was 10 and the eldest who was Craig was 14 so there were three young boys and they'd never really done sort of anything like this before. They discovered that the boys when they left had taken the aluminium ladder that belonged to the Hogue family and they'd assumed that they'd done so in order to climb into one of the caves. A 14 year old named Lynn Stroop claimed to have seen the three boys heading towards Murphy Cave at around 4.30 p.m. carrying flashlights and a shovel. And because of these reports, the caves and the passageways leading into different caves underground they were all extensively searched because obviously three young boys, if they had entered them, whether you know it was undetermined or not, but if they had entered them, they didn't know their way around, they weren't professionals, they didn't have the correct gear, so they were kind of searching them in hopes that they perhaps gotten lost and they were just in one of the tunnels somewhere. But absolutely no trace of the three young boys was found. And on the third day of the search where they found absolutely nothing, many people began to speculate whether their three boys had actually entered one of the caves at all and whether something had actually happened to them on their way to the caves. So the next biggest concern for like authorities and investigators became perhaps that the boys had wandered into the caves and actually wandered into one of the smaller uncharted caves in the area and perhaps as a result gotten lost and gotten maybe perhaps caved in because of the construction work that was going on above their heads meaning that they were in an unknown part of the cave system so the people didn't necessarily know 
how to get in or how to get out. And because a lot of these sort of smaller caves had been sealed up as a result of the construction work going along the highway, they began to rip down these sealed areas and just in hopes of finding perhaps any of the boys if something had happened to them if they'd been trapped and unfortunately died in, in these sort of trapped areas. But as this extensive search continued to absolutely bring up no sign of the three young boys whatsoever, investigators had to kind of focus their efforts elsewhere and other possibilities if though they hadn't invented the caves at all. Trains leaving Hannibal that day after 4.40pm were actually searched and they were again no sign of the three young boys anywhere. Some people continue to this day to doubt whether the boys had actually entered Murphy's cave at all. A lot of people think that perhaps they'd just run away or even more sinister that they'd been picked up by someone but again there was no evidence to suggest absolutely any of these ideas. But to argue this idea of them running away they weren't leaving the house with any of their personal items, they left everything at home so it makes it more and more unlikely that they had intended to stay away longer than that night. Many people began to demand that the little islands in the Mississippi River be searched because there was a claim that some young boys were spotted in St. Louis. But these young boys were tracked down and they weren't found out to be the boys, they said that they were just completely like unrelated, there were just three young boys on this island so that didn't lead to anywhere. The searches into the caves and the surrounding areas went on for 10 days solid after their disappearance before eventually being called off because it was such an extensive search there was physically nowhere else for them to look. Due to the complete lack of evidence into where the boys could have gone people began to speculate whether they'd perhaps been abducted and taken away from Hannibal on that day and they managed to get away with these three young boys before the investigators even caught on. However the likelihood of someone alone being able to kidnap three young boys and take them away without alerting any suspicion is very unlikely. There is a complete lack of evidence to suggest absolutely anything so let me know down below kind of what your theory is. Obviously there's so many theories because there is just no sense of direction in this case. Um, so I know it's not kind of the longest case for me to discuss but that is everything that I'm going to share today. Let me know what you think down below. It's just a really interesting one to discuss and it's absolutely awful that three young boys could just go missing and absolutely no sign of them be found. So yes let me know what you guys think down below as well as any other future cases you'd like me to discuss in other week's videos and i will see you guys soon for another video bye